really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hello there, this is Seriously Speaking. It's really is a pleasure to have my guest on the set today because this set, she's been dressing it for more than two years and I've threatened her that someday she's going to end up on this program and indeed she's a guest today. But this is part of our motivational series. I won't bring anybody here just because. It's not just because she's my set dresser, but because she does work that inspires and motivates. And this is the season for all of that. You've set up your New Year resolutions, you've done all kinds of things you want to do. How are you sure that not again I'm going to break all of those things? We'll meet my guest in a short while if you don't go away. And remember, you can always catch this show on several platforms. And I'm going to scroll that as I take a break before I introduce to you my guests on Seriously Speaking today. <laughs> Welcome back. For today, my guest is a pastor. Whether she likes it or not, Tokme Olatero Lagbeg is my guest. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank you. And uh, she's been the one doing the damage on the sets, uh, six uh, sense, uh, you know. I mean, you've done a lot of sets, right? Right. You dress a lot of sets. Like, um, which ones have you done? That tinsel. Time? Oh, tinsel. Okay. All those beautiful things that we see. That wasn't why I invited you to Seriously Speaking. Oh, really? But I, I just liked what I saw in your environment, six sense. I wanted to believe that you had the six sense when it came to decor. Hmm. Was that named by accident? Well, it wasn't by accident. Yeah. You never um, told me that. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm getting the opportunity to. Um, I'd, the names, I think I started using the name when I was 17 or so, because I had started wow. business for that many years. Wow. Um, and I was, while shopping for a name, you know, I will tell the truth that I went through the dictionary I went looking for something awe inspiring, but mm -hmm. then I found that everything that I was doing um, had a lot to do with the things that came natural to me. Oh. Yeah, and um, every human being, or most human beings, have got five senses, and the things that came natural to me, I decided were my sixth sense. They were the extras. Yeah. So the name stuck with me. What were you doing as a businesswoman, business girl at yeah. 17? Um, I started with the sale of underwear. Yeah. I was selling underwear, then I sold ice creams. Why did you do that? Um, it wasn't because your parents couldn't afford it. Because I know you're from a middle class home. Um, I suppose I was restless. And early on, I found that accounting that I was studying was not particularly for me. So with the extra energy that I had, I decided to begin business. So as well on campus in Unilag? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I officially owned the, f I was actually the first student to own um, a store in the University of Lagos shopping complex. And I ended up owning three before I left. So it was um, a boutique. And then I owned a nail studio. And then I owned a supermarket. Mm -hmm. Yes. So business was just, was it from your mother or from your father? Neither of them are business people. Yeah, my mother is an aquaculturist and my father's an engineer. So is that sixth sense? Yes, it is. How did you see the sixth sense that you had? Okay, so you never really know what it is that you are good at doing until you start doing it. And so I don't, I don't want to say that there's a formula or there was an aha moment for me. It wasn't that. It was just that I constantly needed to get my hands doing something, right? And the more I got my hands doing stuff, the more discovered about myself new things that you had to do yeah now in all of those things a typical university student a girl would be more interested in what what bag what parties happening why weren't you like that okay so maybe i was wired different <laughs> <laughs> because um till date those things don't interest me um i always i'm more geared towards looking for opportunities and looking for satisfying the things that satisfy me and one of which is business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so now you don't business for this long now um what, what the reason i wanted you to come and share with me is you're one of the people i know first of all you always speak at very low tones in fact you, you never raise your voice you're always calm even when because i've been a client too and i've yelled at you different <laughs> times. why would you do this how do you manage to stay so calm okay um i'm not naturally calm no 
No, but I <laughs> think had to over the years, it? yes, I've had to work on, um, because relationship is bigger and more key than anything, you know, and so maintaining these relationships is actually paramount. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell me how you worked at it, so I can learn a few things from that. Conscious effort. Conscious effort. For so, example? Um, my client is king, and so I would never raise my voice, nor insult my client, nor be rude to my client, yeah? Um, I cross the line when I do that, yeah. I'm being paid for something, and when I under-deliver, it's just, I mean, I deserve to be yelled at, mm -hmm. yes. And so I take it in a stride, and I try to make the necessary corrections. Okay, you know what? It wasn't business that brought us together at the beginning, right? And it was actually something that you do, which you call um, orange butterflies. Yes, I found it interesting because when I left your store, after coming in there, they left an orange butterfly on my car. And then it was the beginning of all this WhatsApp craze. And somebody told me they have a group, Orange Butterfly. And I was fascinated. That's why today's woman did a feature on you yeah. at that time. A group of women using their strengths within the social media space. Yeah. But tell me how, social, how your Orange Butterfly began. Okay. Um, okay. The butterfly in itself was a personal mantra. And it was even before simple, you started this group. Even before I started the group, and because um, all your all your stuff is orange. Yes, you know, and all the stuff has got to do with butterflies. Yes. You see, we have a lot of orange here. Yes. Orange. There's never any sense that there's no touch of orange. True. <laughs> and um, it's simple because the life of the business is in the personality that runs it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. Um, when I started business, it wasn't a fairy tale or a fancy story, and um, my prayer Why? had always been like, um, I started That's this I sta business. I started, or yeah, the, 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 the sixth sense, the interior design business. I started selling cushions from the boot of my car. Things like this. Things like this. I was making them in the open market. I wasn't important at the time. Yeah, and so it wasn't a fancy story. It was, and I never knew how it would evolve. No, did you ever work for anybody? No, I didn't. Wow. No, I didn't. So right out, I mean, I had always been doing business. And so right out of school, I just couldn't imagine waiting 30 days to get paid. <laughs> yes. Do so, you get paid every day on business? Um, pretty much, yeah. Well, sometimes you don't get paid for not, no, Well, not, not <laughs> literally getting paid, but I'm doing something, you know. And that money's coming in. Money's and coming in. So how old is this business? Um, officially, we can say about 18 years. Okay, we're talking now about how the Orange Butterfly came about. Right. Orange was your essence anyway. Yeah. And so... Um, so when, while, all the while I was praying to God to please visit the works of my hands, um, I came across um, a quote and um, it said, what the world called the end, God called the butterfly. Yeah. And um, when you look at the life cycle of the Absolutely. butterfly, you see that it's from this very ugly, Poopa. almost disgusting thing and it blossoms into... Um, the butterfly, you know, mm -hmm. and I particularly like the butterfly because um, it, with its gay, its gay colors, it flutters around, it perches, wherever it is, it lands, it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. And I just would have, I love, I wanted that to be my life, that wherever it is that I visited, wherever it is that I went, I left something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was why, that's why I say it was my personal mantra, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And then it became almost like the the, the your reason that exactly mm -hmm. it became the life of the business you know we wanted everywhere we went to have left a mark there um, orange because orange is unpretentious yeah orange is one of those colors that doesn't pretend to be another color you can't miss orange mm -hmm. and so we wanted to 